It is a challenging task indeed to face foes whose souls are enwrapped by demon cunning. But I have every faith they'll fall before you, like so many have before. My privilege, Commander. Let Corvus do his worst, Commander. The dragon will beat him in the end. If you so desire, Commander, but tread with care. <laughs> Have you come in search of my powers, dragon? Oh, you are woefully too late. I have spent them all on myself. My every thousands of cells. Blood the magic. Yes. I am the one who roams the many. To think that foolish wizard thought he could keep me enthralled forever. One does not bind a demon for long. You and your rivaling brothers. You and your bickering sisters. I have aided you all. But always did I know that with the support of my spells and knowledge, the dragon would win the day. Win, yes. Become rich and plump with roaring blood. Until now, you are ready to be devoured. Once I have you bleeding, and I can break the dragon's mind, your dreams I shall walk, and your soul will be mine. One of the ancient line will be my blood servant, and I will be mightier than any demon has ever been. Commander, Claudella, our foremost art.
drawn against us. You may think you have won, Commander, but you have done no such thing. What is left of Claudella's works is locked away in so-called museums, away from the eyes of every undead. Not a single one of us will enter these places ever again or be stricken down by the Seven. Bravo, Commander. You went out of your way to preserve the legacy of a fine artist, and did so despite the diplomatic ramifications. We lizards commend you. Commander, the undead have lost what brains they don't have in the first place, and taken to domesticating the fang bear. These creatures are about twice the size of regular bears, hunt in packs like wolves, and are extremely dangerous. Already, several of these pets have devoured passers-by in the streets, and not to mention the distress caused by the sickening odor left behind when they do their business. They are a menace in about a dozen ways, and I therefore vote that every last domesticated fang bear be put down. So Prospero would have me put down cuddles? Never. Fang bears are affectionate beasts and make for fantastic guardians. That they never harm an undead because we lack flesh on our bones was never even a consideration for our domestication program. Commander, while I appreciate safety concerns, uh, these animals were domesticated and can never be released into the wilderness again. Capture and train no new ones, I agree with that. But to slaughter all those that were unwisely attempted to be trained? No. That would be horrible murder. Every time one of those giant toothed monstrosities draws near, I fear it's in the mood for a dwarf sickle. Listen to dear Prospera, Commander. Put them all down. The pox on that cold-hearted lizard, Commander. Fang bears are cute and hardly snack on imps anymore once properly trained. We even use them as mounts and organize races. Granted, it's not a good race unless three quarters of the riders and their steeds never make it to the finish line, but that's all part of the experience. You are a dragon, and I therefore understand your affinity for dangerous creatures, Commander. But you are putting oxen-sized foxes among the hens, expecting no harmed fowl. We shall see. Seven bless your merciful soul, Commander. I don't know what I'd do without my cuddles. His bloodstained fur, his glimmering white teeth. He's a darling, that fang bear. Very good, Commander. I'm sure there are more sensible solutions than slaughter. Perhaps we could simply muzzle these fang bears. Maybe we could muzzle Prospera too while we're at it. What is this damnable folly? I need fear for my very life each time I walk the streets because a bunch of skeletons adopt bloodthirsty colossi as pets. I'll never leave the Raven no more, Commander. You sure you want that on your conscience? Wonderful. Charming. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to put a bet on a certain fang bear wide as a castle gate running in the three o'clock derby. He's a dead cert, Commander, and you can take that literally. You are a dragon, and I therefore understand You fight with cunning, Commander, and you lead by example. Your enthusiasm is admirable, Com Good news, Commander! The undead riots have been squelched, and the many artworks of Claudella that escaped their pitiful eye have been placed in various museums where they're guarded round the clock. That'll show those intolerant bastards! 
This is a great victory for mankind everywhere. A victory of nature over nurture. Of freedom over oppression. The undead need to know one can be gay and held in high regard nonetheless. Let that be the lesson. This whole business was about art, of course, but still. Let that be the lesson. Impressive victory, Commander. You fight like a lion, which is almost as good as a lioness. In truth, it has hardly begun. We have a lot. What a win you scored, Commander. We should. The situation is pretty bleak, I'd say. But look at it this way, Commander. Means we can only do better, eh? Bah! The Raven is gone. Now I have only Maxos to instruct my fabrications, and his voice isn't sweet and balmy at all. Not like hers. Without delay, my lord.
Olstaff is such a fool. Full of the fleeting sentiment that taints the living. Beauty? Huh. All so-called beauty must fade and wither until its treacherous shell has rotten away to reveal... Behold, true beauty. We, the undead, are its exponents esteemed just by the gods. Lady Ophelia will come to realize that in the end. My great love, my dawn and dusk, minister to me with thy counsel, for I am lost in the blinding mists of misgiving. Upon the very doorstep of completion I falter, encumbered by the insidious sprites of doubt and hesitation. Their incessant chatter satiates my being with pale and quiet dread. Questions. Queries upon burial rise from shallow graves. In search of life, am I taunting death? In pursuit of beauty, am I to become a monster? I have found her, yes. A girl of such unworldly grace, tis as if the Seven touched the cosmic soul and drew from it perfection. With a word, I can find in her a home, thus condemning her to unsought oblivion. Many would cast aside morality when it is but a maggot awaiting its meal, the abstract naysayer to salvation, and therefore the harbinger of decay. Yet I shan't do so, no, for my scruples cry for shame, and the dragon disapproves. The girl shall be released. May the seven bless her. Darkness engulfs me. Death winks and beckons. Am I to be its concubine? What a splendid victory that was. Your strategic insight almost rivals my own. If that is your honest opinion, you do well to seek my sobering counsel. Things are headed... By Hundra's hammer, Commander. May my beard turn green if I didn't just see the most beautiful woman I ever beheld right here on this ship. Rumor has it she is here on Lady Ophelia's behalf. But why would an animated set of bones wrapped in funeral shrouds wish to elicit the company of one so charming and pure? Pure masochism! Not that I don't have the highest respect for your queen, of course. Under my rule, you'd be given the cross of so-so. Steady as she goes and all that. Don't lose your nerve and plan ahead. Know when to be bold and when to take a step back. What a win you scored, Commander. Wish I were a dragon sometimes to burn and battle like you. The war could still go either way, Commander. But if I were a betting man, and I am, having been dealt the hand you're holding, I'd go all in without looking back. Bah! The Raven is gone.
Corvus is still on the loose, Commander. It will take your utmost strength to best him now.
impossible, Commander. A second chance to serve. Ironclads can see right through our tricks. No use cloaking in their vicinity. Enemy ironclads are even harder to sink now that they've installed defensive weaponry. If you've been talking to Oberon, Commander, know he is grossly overacting, in my humble opinion. In a remote town, far away from proper civilization, perhaps it is true tensions between undead and elves could manifest in some sort of temporary violence, but mass killings? By the Seven, no. That I cannot believe. Commander. I have formally accused the undead in the city of Harrow Ridge of genocide and brought the matter before the council. The situation there is frightful. Fanatics among the undead, are there any other, have been purging the unclean, that is to say, the elven community. There have been patrols in the night, empty houses in the morning, and loose earth in ditches near the edges of the city. Scandalous! As is the negligence shown by General Edmund. He was given the task of regulating the town according to your laws. But of course he's not lifted a finger to stop this secretive slaughter because of his well-known contempt for the elves. If there is one favor you can do for me, Commander, it's to invite Oberon up on one of the observation decks, give him a nudge, and let gravity prove elves can indeed not fly. Then at least he can pester me no more with his aggravating accusations of professional misconduct. He's been prattling on and on about some tiff between some of his sorry sort and a couple of undead as hot-headed as they are air-headed. He even talks of genocide, if you can believe it. Melodramatic little man, isn't he? All of this is supposed to be happening in some rural hamlet newly conquered. No more than a collection of pigsties and whorehouses, I imagine, and I bet you can hardly tell the difference. Yes, I was officially given the responsibility to oversee matters there, but some local undead officer said he'd do the job, and I was all the more glad for it. As you can see, Oberon missed the mark once more. I can hardly be charged for misconduct when I haven't even conducted anything, now can I, Commander?
to it. You have before you the greatest general in Rivalon, and you're ordering him to waste his time on a bunch of peasants that are having trouble playing nice. Very well, Commander. Perhaps later I can attend to more of this urgent business. I'm sure there's loads of kittens stuck in trees and toddlers in want of their teddies. Were that I were the monarch and you the general. Very well, wouldn't you say? The end is perhaps not yet in sight, but victory is looming along the horizon like a mist out at sea. Let us hope, unlike the fog, it shan't ever ness. What a win you scored, Commander. Wish I were a dragon sometimes. T we may win, we may lose. Who's to say? I just enjoy my daily dose of demolition. A toast to triumph, Commander. And another. I'm starting to believe we may indeed pull it off, Commander. But we'll have to keep on striking hard and relentlessly.
By the Seven, Commander, what has happened in the town of Harrow Ridge is truly abominable. Such crimes committed by my kingsmen. I can hardly believe it. Those elves, they must have staged unspeakable acts of sacrilege to madden them so. They must have... Why else would they... Heresy gross and foul. The phrase, too little, too late, comes to mind, Commander. But it seems Edmund did his duty in the end. The nightmare of Harrow Ridge vanished come the dawn, and those responsible for the killings have themselves been rendered unto death. Justice is hereby done, and I am furthermore glad to say Edmund apologized for his earlier disbelief in my accusations towards the undead. I hope they too have learned a lesson. They've had a horrid example of what their own religious mania may lead to. Your empire is growing with each passing day, Commander. But commerce is lagging behind. We should invest in new and broader trade routes so that our merchants can catch up with our armies. Our new lands are in need of preachers, Commander, and preachers need paths to get there. Let us therefore build new roads so as to spread the word of the gods. Trade routes such as they spring from dwarven fantasy will cut through forests, dissect rivers and destroy habitats, Commander. I'll have none of it! The state of many thoroughfares is lamentable indeed. Proper roads flanked by guard posts and inns will increase the security and comfort of travelers and yet have a positive effect on our economy. Fullstaff is right. Ever tried to cross a swamp with a cannon wagon? Took 50 imps to pull Big Bertha out of the mud. Wonderful! I'll see to it construction works start before the sun has set. And the grandest road of all we'll call Via Draconis, in your honor. Praise be, for these roads will be a tribute to the Seven. I will order my fellow undead to build a chapel at every seventh milestone. The green mother's skin with yet more streaks of cold stone is unconscionable, Commander. Every bird and beast will bedam your name. Wonderful. Perfect. But let's have lizards man the guard posts and dwarves run the inns. Having it the other way around would see us drunken sentinels and all too stern barkeeps. Good. I can picture it now. A hundred miles of dynamite and boom! Instant Holloway. Engineering at its best. Harrow Ridge. A harrowing place if ever there was one, Commander. When Oberon first spoke of its supposed horrors, I dismissed them as the ravings of yet another counsellor shouting for attention. But it was all damnably true. The undead, they were slaughtering each and every elf they could get their bony, sordid claws on. In the name of the Seven. Lunatics, the lot of them. But no skeleton stirs there anymore. 
They tasted their own medicine by my very blade. The law of the land I set in place and left a kindly old elven landowner as mayor. They'll rebuild their houses, lost to zealots' torches, and forget as best as they might the Knights of Blood. To think the idea of a few dead elves made me chuckle as I travelled there. Quite another thing to see them lying in the ditches, row on row, gored and mangled. Yet no sooner had my troops restored order than their survivor spirits soared once more, and they swore to reshape their stricken little society. I'll think kindlier of elves in future, Commander. They're a stout lot over there in Harrow Ridge. Good luck to them. Looks like Edmund's impenetrable contempt for all that is non-lizard was Pierce, Commander. Be it ever so slightly. Had a kind word to say about some elves out in the country. Why it do that for the life of me, I can't imagine. Triumph begets triumph, it seems. There's just no stopping you, is there? So-so. Steady as she goes and all that. Don't lose your nerve and plan ahead. Know when to be bold and when to take a step back. You taught our enemy the meaning of defeat, Commander. But all- I'm a general in your army, so I'd be amiss to say no, wouldn't I? Remain vigilant, though. For the instant you overplay your hand, the Empire may be lost.
So Lady Ophelia denied imp technology at your behest, did she, Commander? I suppose it's for the best. Maybe now she'll finally accept she is to acknowledge the gods and quietly wither like they bid her to. My light and dark. Such news I have to share. Is it not miraculous that upon the very edge of desperation, I should find salvation perched, its legs dangling nonchalantly over the edge? Icarus is my liberator's name, a wizard of fearsome but revered reputation. He has traveled from beyond the endless gray to undo my plight. Moved as he was by the tales of the withering princess, who by her very nature should be impervious to death, were it not that sickness stalked her soul. He has powers that are as prodigious as they are unique. With the talent of a virtuoso, he shall, according to my instructions, brandish his brush upon bare canvas, and there beget a woman of ultimate beauty. Then, when his masterpiece is finished, he will weave nameless magic. I shall be the painted phantasmagoria come to life. You have, of course, my love, long gathered that Icarus is not moved solely by the kindness of his heart. The need for recompense doth besmirch his noble intentions. One of two things he asks of me, a night between my sheets once my transformation is complete. Or a hoard of gold the likes of which would fill his far-off palace to its very brim. the degradation he would visit upon my person. Only you will know my embrace once I dismiss these bones and become a woman of flesh and blood. I shall have long golden hair, azure eyes and ruby lips. All that I never was, I shall be. A skirmish we fought today, but the way you handled it was impressive. To a degree, yes. To an equal degree, no. Everything still lies in the balance, and you're the one to tip it in our favor, if you can. There's this strange fellow on the ship, Commander. Did the best party trick I ever saw. One moment he doodles a pint. The next, it's real, and he's drinking it. Maxos can learn a thing or two from this character. Under my rule, you'd be given the Cross of Bravery for that last action, Commander. I'd say it's going well, but don't be afraid to be a little daring. What a win you scored, Commander. We're well on the way to victory, I'd say. Won't be long now before we have the bastards on the run. It is a challenging task indeed to face foes whose souls are enwrapped by demon cunning. But I have every faith they'll fall before you, like so many have before. <laughs> <laughs> 